there's definitely been a major shift in the United States uh, just in the last five years when it comes to Palestine activism. So for one thing, when I was in college, uh, the number of students involved in doing anything related to Palestine was under 10 actively. And all of them were viciously attacked and doing this work they knew came with um, many compromises and many threats. And yet, when you look at today what's happening um, and the number of people involved in the movement, the number of people eagerly wanting to learn more, to connect the dots between Palestine and numerous other movements for social justice in the US from movements against police brutality, so the movement for black lives, to climate justice, to immigrant rights, to um, anti-war work, it's, it's really astounding. And the fact that we can talk about Palestinians, we can talk about Palestine without having to qualify it, without having to respond to the same threats of or accusations of anti-Semitism, uh, terrorism charges. That's not to say those are completely gone, far from it, they still exist. But what we're seeing now is that Palestine is increasingly not a fringe issue. It's actually entering the mainstream um, and entering the mainstream on Palestinian terms. We're seeing the words ethnic cleansing used more and more. We're seeing the words apartheid. Um, and even settler colonialism, not quite, but I think we're moving in that direction. And the fact that this is happening in the United States, the world's largest imperial power, uh, the world's superpower still, um, and uh, Israel's main backer is, I think is, is really, really significant. I mean, who would have thought that on the floor of Congress, you could have members of the US House of Representatives talking about Palestine, talking about Palestinian freedom, talking about the need to end occupation, the need to end police brutality against Palestinians. Last week when Rashid al confronted Joe Biden on the tarmac in Michigan, I mean, who would have thought this could happen five years ago? So I think what the Democratic Party establishment is seeing um, is that they're not gonna be able to go back to the status quo. They're gonna have to figure something out. And it's true, they're gonna, they're gonna do everything they can to re-establish some sort of center, center-right position. There are over 200 bills in the United States trying to suppress Palestine advocacy. 23% of those laws have passed. Um, they're actually in effect. And in New York, which is where I am, uh, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, uh, a few years ago passed an anti-boycott executive order. And what that meant was if you, uh, as an individual or as an institution or organization that receives funding from New York State, if you engage in any form of boycott against Israel, any form, even if it's tangential, meaning you invite someone to speak that engages in boycotts of Israel, you will lose that funding. You will be put on a blacklist and you will not get funding or support from the New York State. Now, this is a huge violation of constitutional law um, and people have pointed that out. But what Andrew Cuomo is doing is something that other states are trying to do or have done. There's a reason why the US government is waging an all out war on BDS because it's gonna hurt its own profits. It's not just about um, Israel, but it's about US economy, um, US profits in the military industrial complex. So Caterpillar is one example because Israel uses those bulldozers to uh, demolish Palestinian homes, um, to build the apartheid wall, etc. Boeing is another example because they supply the aerial weaponry that Israel uses to um, oppress Palestinians and to maintain its blockade on Gaza. So all of these corporations aren't just involved in Israel. They're involved in a number of other states that are surveilling, oppressing um, their own domestic and indigenous populations. So Elvis Systems builds the uh, checkpoints, the surveillance and technology on the checkpoints in, in Palestine, in the West Bank, between Palestinian cities. And it also actually built the, uh, the US-Mexico border technology and surveillance that's used against um, immigrants and refugees on the U.S.-Mexico border. So there's a lot of connections to be drawn, and I think that's why BDS is so important, because it helps us draw these connections between corporations that are complicit in human rights violations and crimes against humanity all around the world. The reality is there's more of us in the streets, yes. There's more people talking about anti-Zionism, yes. There are more people identifying with Palestinians in their fight for liberation, that's true. But there's still a $3.8 billion package that's going to Israel every single year from the US government. So I think the next step is, how do we take all of these shifts and how do we create something concrete to stop the material support for apartheid? How do we defund Israel's settler colonial project? And then how do we take that and um, incorporate it into the, the, broader, the broader fight against the US military industrial complex?